was last week that his uh, goals for the season were a thousand thousand yards rushing, thousand yards receiving, thousand yards as a return man. Watching him every day is that uh, how unrealistic or realistic is that expectation? Uh, I think it's as realistic as he makes it in terms of his work ethic and his ability. Uh, he has obviously more than enough athletic ability to to do some special things for us. Um, I personally didn't see that 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 goal. Uh, some folks had told me about it, and I, I think it's great. You know, if you if you have to set a goal for yourself and a standard for yourself, and he's been that type of young man for us, even in recruitment, he he sets a high standard and a high bar. And now it's really, I guess, our organization, myself, and and how we kind of do things here. Uh, under Coach Kleiman is just to get him to understand the process to obtain whatever goals you set for yourself. So uh, that's something that we emphasize, uh, you know, set goals for yourself. He's one kid that has always done that his entire life, and that's how he's brought up. So I think in terms of his work ethic and his abilities, you you pair those things together, uh, you have a perfect storm. There's no telling what will happen. So uh, at the end of the day, I think that it was good um, that he at least ha has goals in mind and, and has that type of mindset and, and has had that mindset. Um, but, I, you know, that's his prerogative, and, and I believe that he goes out in that field and operates as is. Uh, there's no telling what could happen. I also wanted to ask you about Malik. Uh, just based on the roster, it looks like he added some, some size this offseason. Is he playing at all different with that size right now? He is. He looks good. He looks, you know, he's always been a fluid athlete. He looks really good. Uh, I think even during the time that we were off and, and there was shelter in place and things such as that, and all our guys were, were at their prospective homes, he, he put in the work. And that was something that we emphasized to the entire team that while not being in Manhattan, you, know, you can still find ways to better yourself uh, physically and mentally. And he is one that he, he looks different. Uh, I think he, he knows that he has some room to grow, uh, both physically and mentally, and, and in terms of learning our offense and our system. So he looks good. I mean, he, he's always been fluid, like I said. And I think he's moving well and just continue to stay healthy and continue to move forward. D. Scott? Yeah, hey, Jason. Hey, um, how can Malik take that next step? The next step for him, I think a lot of it is going to deal with confidence. Uh, he is a confident kid. I think, you know, he was banged up a little bit last season. Uh, he's healthy. Like I said, I think he's put on some weight, some some really good weight. Uh, his mobility is fine. He looks good. Now it's just – now he – and he's made some actual plays out there that you would say those are those next-level type plays in terms of taking his game here uh, to the next level and just to be consistent. So between consistency and confidence, uh, I think those are the two things that would aid him in taking, his, taking steps to making himself a, a, a more dominant player. I've heard some good things about Sebastian Taylor over the course of uh, preseason ball. Tell me about him. Sebastian's always been one that has worked uh, very hard. Uh, his pregame workout is one that I think a lot of really good athletes and in, in whatever sport kind of they have a routine is not just one that looks like fluff and just doing things for no reason he kind of puts himself in a in a state of mind in, in pregame in the weight room and does some things and from a stretching and mobility takes care of his body uh, when we have off days he's talking about going to go get a massage and, and things like that so he's really taking care of himself that way uh, he's always been a physical, you know, gifted athlete, you know, in terms of his height and size and weight. But he he has a lot of he's gained a lot of confidence. And that has been the plus with him. And I'm just I as he continues to get more confident, I think he'll continue to have success and, and get better. Would he be one of your biggest movers and shakers in the depth chart this year? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he played last year. You know, he was in a in a backup role primarily uh, when we had guys nicked up. Uh, he, he, I think he may have started a game or two. I can't remember. He's He's been in the rotation pretty fluid, whether we get to uh, some of his package things or not last, from last season. We're just kind of, you know, not necessarily luck of the draw, but just how the game flowed uh, last year. But he's one that I've always, and we have always as offense and as a staff had said, you know, he, from special teams to being a, a guy in a normal rotation, he's definitely – in that in that mix and, and has been in that mix uh, and a lot of his things last year were kind of game flow things 
Uh, but he, he made a few plays that were kind of under the radar, big plays for us in terms of some third down, fourth down conversions, big touchdowns here, there, some chunk plays, uh, some scramble drill plays. So he quietly has done some things for us uh, that I think I'm excited to see what he continues to build upon this, this season. Derek? Uh, Coach, uh, what do you lose with Dalton Schoen not on the roster anymore? And, and how do you replace it, or who do you replace him with? Uh, what you lose with Dalton is, is leadership and experience, just naturally. The experience thing is, is more of a natural thing in terms of his leadership qualities. That's something that he had stepped into a role. Obviously, everyone knows his, his background and his story and, and the things he, he's done for Kansas State football. Uh, you lose those two things primarily initially. You know, you would say without us having a spring ball, um, you, you didn't have that opportunity to see who, who was going to step into a leadership role in terms of the spring and, and who was going to fill some of those voids that a senior leader with the experience that Dalton had uh, would have in the spring. But – I, you know, who fills that role? I don't know. I don't, you know, there's not going to be a, a kid that you would say he's the next Dalton Show. I think these guys, the receiver room, they, there are a lot of really good, unique talents in the room. And I think I'm excited to see which guys continue to, you know, build the tradition that we that we want here as K State receivers have been. But I think the off season when we kind of got back here. Uh, they were a group, the position group uh, at, at wideout was one that was being praised quite a bit, you know, just their work ethic and just how they were working and competing. So I think overall the competition level in that room is high and those guys have really worked uh, hard this off season to, to make it one that they're, they're holding the standard. So. Got time for one more. Ryan Black. Hey, Jason, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing well. So, uh, you know, Keenan Garber, when you guys got him, he was a big, big, big time player in the state uh, when you guys signed him. What's the sense that he can work into the rotation this year after red shirt and last year? Well, I think anything's uh, up for grabs. You know, like I said, I think with spring ball, um, obviously not having a spring uh, to evaluate, a spring evaluation, this right now we're still in evaluation mode, but we've always said we evaluate everything. We were evaluating things while they were home. Uh, and, and doing things like daily check-ins and, uh, you know, just from a mental health standpoint and were guys showing up to their Zoom meetings. And so that was the, that was the standard that we had in terms of just sample size of what, what, what are we evaluating when they're not on campus? How can we make evaluations? Whether it was a, a Zoom meeting and, and we're giving out quizzes uh, about formation. So, the mental side uh, with Keenan is something that uh, he and I have had conversations about, just continue to grow mentally, learning the system. And we get plenty of reps, you know, double rep. And, and so there's a lot of film, even to this day, that we've had to evaluate after 10 days of practice or whatever it's been. So, uh, like I said, everything's wide open in my eyes. And I think that as he continues to compete and grow, uh, he'll have opportunities. There's plenty of opportunities for evaluation for him. And now it's just a matter of, of, of him taking, taking the bull by the horns and, and, and continue to get better. And then you guys signed one, one receiver in this last class. That was Jalen Travis. Has he been impressive so far? What have you thought about him since he got to campus and been able to get with you guys? I think he's been good. You know, obviously the, these circumstances aren't normal for, for anybody right now, and in particular a kid that uh, a true freshman that just shows up to college. This is not necessarily what anyone would have signed up for your, your first you know, semester in school. But he has really good skill set. You know, I got a chance to see him play a couple times and, and obviously haven't evaluated his film. And so what he's done movement-wise on the field is what we saw on tape and then what we saw live. And I, I'm excited for him. He, he's got to get stronger. He's got to, you know, build more muscle. And, and, and he will. I mean, he's a true freshman. But he's a very good prospect for us, a very good signee. And I think that he's going to have a good future here and just continue to learn and get better.